Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm here to present a session on Translate extension. Let me introduce myself. My name is Vera. I'm user author on Wikimedia Wikis. And let's start then. Here we go. I may not be the most experienced person to talk about Translate extension, uh, but I can easily be the most enthusiastic about it. I'm really a fan and I will try to convey my feelings to you today. So what is the Translate extension? Um, as you know, MediaWiki is a software that has really many different things that help us use it and Translate extension makes MediaWiki a powerful tool to translate every kind of text, um, especially on multilingual wikis. You can um, recognize pages that use translate extensions by these markers. So MetaWiki is a um, most famous, I think, uh, example of that. If you see this little um, button translate this page um, at the top, and this um, pretty box of other languages that the page is um, available in. Um, if you see this look, then uh, translate extension is at work. Where it is used? It is used on um, multiple uh, wikis on tra translate wikinet, where we um, are able to translate the interface of our wikis, uh, but also on MetaWiki, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, Wikimania wikis you might have seen, and more. Please don't confuse it with the content translation because this thing is not uh, used um, on Wikipedia as content, as content translation is. Uh, what we usually translate through translate uh, extension is um, translating projects, contest pages, newsletters of different um, teams and uh, affiliates and such. And also um, Templates can be translatable as well if these templates are intended um, for usage on such projects as I have just uh, mentioned. How do you start translating? You just look for that translate this page button. And I can assure you that um, it is, um, however small this button is, people do find it. I uh, sometimes see really random users for whom uh, translating something on MetaWiki is basically their first ever recorded edits. And um, this fascinates me all the time. Um, but how to make a page translatable is a um, whole different story. We have uh, special users called translation administrators who have technical permissions for that. Uh, by now, you might be thinking that I am uh, explaining very basic things. If you are an experienced translation administrator, why would you need to know all that? I am hoping that this session will be uh, useful for anyone who has ever crossed paths with uh, Translate extension. From different points of view, translators on one hand, creators of the pages on, on another hand, and main translation administrators, and I will give you um, the points that I find useful myself being um, all three of those instances at once. I have created pages, I have translated them into Ukrainian multiple times, and I'm a translation administrator as well. So first of all, let me just show my appreciation to this uh, extension as a translator and as a uh, Wikimedian. It's a nice and important extension. Uh, it allows me, um, let, let me be personal here, to bring closer some things that are going on in the broader Wikimedia movement to my own Ukrainian speaking community. Um, I take pride in, um, in the fact that Ukrainian community is always very active at different kind of elections. Um, and I attribute that not least uh, to the fact that we have, uh, we always have the basic pages translated into Ukrainian and we can bring this uh, very important information to the community in the language that it understands. An interface looks amazing for a translator. It has tiny blocks. It is a fairly easy system. You have your text um, to, to translate. Um, you have um, your translation side by side. 
here it's uh, how it looks like. I can um, use different um, useful buttons and uh, tabs here. So I uh, select Ukrainian as a, as a target pay, um, language. I can sort out the untranslated parts of the page so that I don't have to look through the whole of it. I can filter um, this um, list of separate um, sort of chunks of text for translation um, by the words that I need, like looking for the uh, exact paragraph where something was mentioned. Um, so this is how it uh, looks for translator rather nicely. Uh, here at the bottom, you can see the progress bar and uh, see that several um, paragraphs on this page are outdated. Um, therefore, this um, orange uh, part of the bar that indicates me that I have some work to do on this page or someone else um, who is able to do that. When I press um, on a um, paragraph, I see this, so I can see that this translation may need to be updated, but it's not a very crucial thing. Um, basically, from this um, view, I can't even tell you what changed there. And I also see suggestions. Um, this is the translation memory. Uh, similar um, paragraphs were already uh, used somewhere on other pages. And so translation memory helps me with that. I can always um, also choose in my preference to show suggestions in other languages. And here you uh, see one of them, <clears throat> just for example. So really looks nice um, for me as a translator. Also, writing translatable pages is good for your skills of presenting information clearly. Um, both for native English speakers and non-native speakers, thinking about something with translation in mind allows you to um, formulate your thoughts more clearly in smaller sentences so that it can be easily translated to other languages because all languages function differently. Don't forget about that. An original page and its translated versions stay in unison. If something changes in the original, the translated page will be outdated and it will show uh, to people. And so that's important. Um, this is why I, I like this thing. However, this is a non-ideal solution to the broad multilinguality problem. It is not ideal in many ways. And I will just list you the uh, weak points that this extension has as of today. And it is a long list. There can only be one source language. A page cannot involve in several languages at once. Though if you have um, a French page as an original, you can set up the um, language of the page to the French, but then it can always be translated only from French language and not from anything else. Translated categories are cluttered and useless to some uh, people. It is nice that they are created uh, automatically, sort of, but um, they may not help or may not be as useful as people want them to be. Renaming translatable page can be a mess if it has hundreds of sub pages. Um, it's a very niche problem, yet it happens. Page administration requires lots of manual labor, as translation administrators in the room will definitely know. Special page preparation intended to help page translators is practically useless for um, very um, long and difficult settings. Um, let's see how the um, page looks when um, it has all the um, translation markup in it, it is definitely um, more cluttered than it would be without all that. Um, and I will um, take this opportunity to mark these um, uh, two things to sh just tell you how they are called in our jargon. Um, this 
uh, T uh, number is a translation marker uh, and it um, is put by the extension automatically there to just um, number the translation units and translation unit is one separate chunk of text that is uh, presented for translation. Um, the weak points did not end there. A complex translation markup can be painful if you need to work with tables. Um, when tags are added to source page, um, people who are not familiar with them can get scared away and dis, uh, discouraged from updating the page. There will always be a tagging mistake you will need to fix. That's uh, actually a pretty uh, common thing for Wikimedian in any case, but here it might be um, of different value. Fixing errors after your um, mistakes and, and others' mistakes can um, make you edit all the translations as well. Um, yeah, this is the third slide from naming all the bad things about it, and I will do that because there is no easy way to signal the translator that the change has happened. Um, um, the change might be minor and writing uh, on a talk page of uh, multiple translators might seem as an overkill in some regards. Extension lags sometimes and requires um, dummy edits. The memory is not always working nicely and translators are frankly overwhelmed by the amount of work. There are lots of pages to be translated and no easy way to know um, what is most recent and most important and what isn't. And then if translation administrator make, uh, makes uh, a visible mistake, then it adds work to However, what do we do with a poor tool like that? We use it as best as we can. In spite of all these weaknesses, it still has its core strength, right? It allows people to translate things. And when done nicely, when translation administrator breathes deeply and does his or her work, um, translation uh, extension with all the workarounds that we have for it um, works fine. This is my personal opinion, if you uh, want to know. I um, think of this extension as an old cat. It may have its um, illnesses by now from old age, um, but we still love it. As a translator, let me give uh, several um, pieces of advice. Uh, to a person who approaches a, a page as a translator, you need to prioritize your work. Uh, a page is not your 100% priority when its targeted audience is fluent in English. It happens sometimes. It will be uh, mostly true for Media Wiki, Wiki for example. Uh, if you know that only developers will likely use that um, documentation page, then maybe it's not your priority uh, to uh, translate it. And if it, um, if it is something that concerns broader community, then of course it is more important to translate uh, that page. A text needs to be good as a text. Uh, sometimes um, the fact that we have the page um, broken down into this, uh, these uh, small chunks um, prevents us translators from perceiving it as a whole thing. Um, if um, there is a message then it needs to deliver and not to be 100% exact as original because, you know, languages are all different. Um, you can use aggregate groups to translate uh, exactly the uh, topic you want to, um, um, to want to work on. You can uh, open special language stats and see pages grouped uh, by some topic. For example, different sub pages of uh, that are connected to current elections this year, they are all in one aggregate group. You can open it as one very long page and just translate it for hours on end. And you can reuse previous translations. Um, some things that repeat um, all the time will be uh, the same. Translation member will help you with that. But also you can use special search translations um, to search previous um, translate and translated um, pages where something is uh, mentioned. There are different glossaries. There is a main Wikimedia glossary. Um, there are still um, some pages in um, for local language teams, uh, for example, if your language community has set it up, um, 
look for it if it um, is available. And it, um, there are also um, um, some thematic pages like Movement Strategy has their own uh, page of uh, terms listed there. So that can be helpful. And um, just basic search for other, other pages that might be connected and reuse the terms uh, will help you as well. Um, since I've mentioned um, two special um, pages already, here is a um, special pages page on MetaWiki. And down um, at the, almost at the end of the page, you will have this um, uh, section, all the pages that are um, connected to translate extension. Uh, the ones in bold are um, used by a translation administrators only but all the others will help you as an ordinary translator or editor as well uh, may I remind you that special pages are um available on the um on the left the screen on the sidebar create edit or update a page always with translation in mind you don't have to be translation administrator to help everyone um with um the work with the flow of this um, of this extension. Write clearly, speak human, write small sentences, don't use colloquialisms, and so on. Here is a link to the page where these um, guidelines are listed. Um, write with updates in mind. If something will change, um, try to word it in the way that um, will ease the updating of the page. Um, for example, um, you can write a separate um, sentence for something that will be added um, added there um, later instead of um, rewriting the previous previous things. Uh, use common existing messages. There are there is a category of common messages, uh, little um, templates for common phrases that can be reused, like more languages. Um, this is a template that basically shows a phrase, this message is available in more languages, and it is translated, and so it shows people that um, translations can be found in other places. Template edit section can help there as well, so um, there are already little uh, things that you can look for. Translatable page has to be as stable as possible, so if you're setting up a contest page, for example, um, please try to write everything you can from the very beginning so that when the page is marked for translation, it will change only in, if there is a dire need. It is not a good idea to have translatable content and user comments on the same page. And here is an asterisk because I'm speaking about translate extensions. There are other ways of translating content on our pages, but exactly for this extension, it's not a good idea because every uh, comment that a person will uh, add on the page will require the page to be marked for translation again. And um, this can be avoided, so please avoid it if you can. If an already translated page looks good enough, let it be. Don't be a perfectionist there. Some changes uh, can just wait until something more dire happens. Move around translation markup, and um, here I mean move, move yourself. Like if you don't understand uh, something, if you're not familiar with it, don't delete it, don't change it. Just edit the text that you need, um, add a separate paragraph with additional information on the page, and so on. Um, Visual Editor supports translatable pages now, so um, you will see the commented things, translation markers there will be um, shown up as um, comments, so please don't delete those, they are useful. Here is a checklist for setting up a page for translation as I follow it. This is my experience and I hope will be useful for you as well. Here is my um, sandbox page, like um, just to show you an example of how a page that have to be translated later can look like. I have some section titles, I have a list, I have a little um, table, have a category, have different um, links through the page and an image. Um, so let's go quickly through all that. Um, check whether page is stable. This is the first thing you will have to do as a, um, 
when you start to mark a page for translation and it's not necessarily to be a, a translation administrator to do that but um this is mainly for so to say ta's by now um check whether it is stable whether all the um mm, wiki markup uh not translation markup but just wiki markup is um in nice form in there so that it is as stable um, as possible when you mark it you put tag languages on top of the page to show that pretty boxes box with languages later you put blank lines after section titles it is um rather important it makes uh makes it clearer for a translator that this is a section uh, and it is a separate translation unit so um, basically you can put an opening translate tag on top of your page and closing translate tag at the bottom but then we have some um, additional things to do um, add translation variables so-called t-bars different links get different treatment um, so, um, links to Wikipedia stay as they are because you probably want your um, translators to localize that and put links to their own language Wikipedia, right? Um, but external links that will not be changed regardless what language of translation um, they will be in have to go into translation variables so that um, when the link is inside this text in the source code, the translator will just see a little word link that will indicate that the link is there and will not have to deal with the whole uh, lot of um, um, link markup in their translation special my language is a nice prefix that has to be used uh, in front of any translatable page in theory if it is not translatable yet but it will be you better uh, use that prefix so that when a person um, clicks that on a translated version of the page, they go to their, their language version. And break paragraphs into smaller chunks. Paragraphs may be long. People like to translate smaller things. It's just emotionally easier. One sentence is okay, two or three if they are short, but please give translators whole sentences whenever possible. Um, don't uh, go into the other direction of breaking the, the page into very small um, pieces uh, because not all not, not all languages work the same as English do right so we need to have the whole idea the whole sentence um, to be able to translate it properly let's look at this um, sandbox page again and I'm sorry that it has this very small uh, font but um, you can recognize the links right i'm linking lorem ipsum at the beginning i'm linking wikimania submissions for some reason mm, there are different um, types of links here right <clears throat> um and at the bottom um of the page below the um, edit field you have this um, toolbar with different translation tags as well as other tags so they can help you um, you have the translate tags, the languages, and uh, tvars um, tags here to help you with inserting them. Here is how the page will look like after my tagging. So languages on top, translate tags, um, embrace every chunk of text that I want translated. So I'm leaving out the name of the file, for example, because it is... Um, unnecessary for translator uh, to see that if they will not change it mm, i am putting all the links into uh, tvars the links that have to be um, unchanged regardless of the uh, of the language right and um, the email is also in the um, in the translation variable so that it is not um, changed accidentally into something that people cannot use <clears throat> Um, this is actually not as bad as it could be. And you can uh, see the second paragraph is uh, broken down as well as the first one, as all of them, um, into smaller um, 
chunks of translation. You can see the closing tag translate and then the opening tag right after it. It will still look as one paragraph on the translated page, but it will be uh, with, it will look as separate translation units for translation, and it is a little bit easier for translators uh, with that. So excluding non-translatable markup is a rather uh, important uh, thing. It avoids um, the clutter for uh, translators because if they don't need um, to change something, they just have to go around it and it takes more effort. Uh, put each list item into its own translate tag pair. Um, um, this is also done in these um, um, thinking about translators and uh, making things easier for them. Um, categories go outside the text. They don't the text. They don't have to be translated as um, other things. They are translated in this way. They're using the magic word. Use anchors for section titles if they are referred from other pages. Uh, because if you are linking to a translatable page uh, to, and to a section or on a translatable page and give the link of um, with the hashtag and the English title of uh, this section, this link will not work for the translated versions of the page unless you put an anchor there. This is something that um, sounds stupid, uh, pretty much, but it's something that we still have to do. Preview the page, look for the translate tags or anything else unusual showing up in the text. Um, sometimes if you are um, excluding all the additional markup from, from the page, uh, you might um, lose some opening and closing translate tags. Um, it helps for me to just um, search on the page for translate and opening and closing tags and just look if the numbers of them are the same. Um, but yeah, if something is wrong, you will see it on preview. Translation aware, transclusion of templates and pages is a thing. So if you want um, a, a template on your page or a um, transcluded page, to be shown um, in other languages as well. You will have to mark those for translation and not forget to have this um, um, check of um, transclusion allowed there. Just be um, aware that the, it, 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 it is this thing. <laughs> um, previously, we needed to use a separate uh, template called TNT uh, for that, but no more, so it's um, something that um, became easier for um, translation admins lately. Then you save the page, you press the mark this page for translation, check if all the units look okay to you, and if they don't, you go back and edit your page again uh, before you are actually marking it for translation because, you know, you don't need to um, create <clears throat> unnecessary work for uh, translators. I think we can agree on that. Unit markers, those um, letters T with numbers, are assigned automatically. You don't have to put them manually, you don't have to change them manually, and you don't need to worry that these markers are on the page um, in their numerical order. It doesn't matter. The system understands how they are should be given on the page in the translated version of the page. So don't worry about those. Most of the times, um, you don't need to worry about them. Stop for a second and congratulate yourself for good work because it, by now, it is really good work that you've done. Then you tr uh, press translate this page, um, check if all the uh, units look okay to you as a translator. Even if you're just a, an English speaker and you, know, you don't know other languages, um, you can uh, choose translating to Polish, for example, and just check if everything is okay. If there are no broken things, or at least things that look like broken links uh, there. Uh, anything unusual that you can spot up uh, before all the other translators spot uh, that up um, is, um, is important. So please do that. You can press notify translators if needed. Um, this is done on the um, page of 
marking the page for translation. Um, I know that not all um, admins use that and not always because what it does, it sends a notification to all the translators on this wiki that are signed up as translators. And this is these are hundreds of people, if I'm not mistaken. And it sounds like a lot. So it is usually used for really important things, right? Um, but you can call translators in whatever other methods you use on translational, um, the um, mailing list, um, using talk pages um, of uh, the users that you know. If you need to um, have updates in only several uh, target languages, right? And so on. Um, add a page to an aggregate group. Uh, this is um, useful for people who translate uh, multiple pages in bulk and um, also looks neat, you know, when all things are in order. And again, congratulate yourself for a good work because you have done well. And this is um, um, the third part of the checklist that is always um, done by the most sturdy of translation admins. And there are not many of those. Here it um, the same sandbox page of mine, uh, how it looks for a translator. So I see it um, untranslated here. And here is a little button that uh, can be used not by translator or not only, but by you as editor of the page or a translation admin is adding documentation for this particular translation unit. And it is a, a very useful tool, especially when you are uh, hiding into translation variable something that is not obvious. Uh, if you are using a term that is not obvious in meaning, um, from my experience, I remember the troubles we've had with the word equity the first time it started to be used. Mm. And so here you can add the documentation on how to translate this particular unit of text. And it is, it is in, uh, useful and it is important for translators to have that. And the last part of the checklist. Um, uh, what should I do then? Excuse me, I will try to show my slides again. All right, last few slides. Um, adding documentation, I have already mentioned. Um, when the text is updated, updated, a translation admin will have to mark the page for translation again, so that all the changes in the source text are forwarded for translators to work on. Check if the units are marked as needing to be updated. Um, only when necessary. You will see that on um, marking the page uh, for translation as the uh, checkboxes. And sometimes um, it is needed and sometimes it isn't. It is up to you. Just uh, pay attention to that. If units are split, please update existing translations yourself if you can, because this is a manual thing and not a creative thing and not a translator thing. If you had uh, two sentences in one unit and now you have two separate units, this is something that usually can be done by the very person who is splitting this unit as a translation admin. And um, if you know that it has to be done, it is easier for you to do that than to gather dozens of translators to do that in their own languages one by one. Uh, here is an example, um, and I'm not saying that this is a bad page uh, in its mark being marked for translation, but here is an example of what happens when something is split. 
so um, IP masking and changes to workflows and the date um, previously were in the same unit and now these are separate units. This is um, something that I understand why it is my, uh, marked as fuzzy for me as a translator because uh, using the brackets is not the same in different uh, languages and so on. Uh, but this is something that uh, can be avoided or should be or just please be mindful about that. Use Fabricator for reporting bugs, uh, meaning very um, harsh things that um, prevent you from using the extension. Some are known for a long time, um, but you can subscribe to those and um, add new info. And here I mentioned too uh, that I am um, following the more, most closely, most awaited fix is adding the anchors automatically and it hopefully will um, um, happen in the future. Uh, old one about the translation memory not working in certain cases uh, has its workarounds in different places. For example, uh, there is a template sold exactly for translating tech news, which are a weekly newsletter. So if you're translating um, tech news, have a look at that. And if you're a translation admin maintaining something as repetitive as tech news are, um, you can use that as a... Um, as a template for, for, for your own workaround, maybe. Um, we have needs and translate does not meet all of them yet. Here I'm listing four of the needs that um, other people that I've talked to mentioned to me. There should be a way to translate the page and all of the, the templates it used easily, just like aggregate groups um, are. Special preparation could be more useful. Echo notification would be great, but this is something that we just need to uh, push. Mm, language and translation team at the foundation will definitely help. I am not aware whether these um, examples here are um, already um, listed on Fabricator or not. This is just that I know people are talking about. But what we do need, uh, we need to um, move our oral and folk knowledge into some written form. So. Um, if uh, any of you would like to um, help on that, that would be great. What I did not talk about in this uh, session, and there is lots of things uh, to talk about, the Translate Wiki and how it is used in, for non-Wikimedia things. Um, the templates, they are a whole different um, story, not so different, but, you know, um, other things are to be said about that. There is um, a need of balance in using templates on pages for optimization. Um, the style of marking things for translation sometimes differ, and we can um, have a pr um, friendly argument about which are uh, used because the docs uh, may not be coherent in all the um, instances, but um, help is always out there. And uh, I hope that um, you'll be able to feel um, better about the translate and how you use that first post mask on yourself than on others. This is something that helps uh, me and hopefully will help you. Um, my personal thanks to people who helped me while preparing this thing and always with work on the translate extension itself. If you have your favorite people, who, users who can help you, that's great. We are community. Um, there are pages that uh, will help you um, with working on the translate extension. The um, documentation is always there. Uh, other pages marked for translation. You can open in editing mode and just um, use it as a cheat sheet. And MetaTalk Babylon is for those of you who want to ask questions in person. It is monitored by some uh, very um, experienced translation administrators, so don't uh, hesitate to write your questions there. This is a phrase that I've heard recently about our experience with Translate Extension. We're practicing equitable inconvenience here. Everyone is a little bit <laughs> inconvenienced by it, um, but in the end, uh, when we um, do our parts, when um, editor creates a page nicely and translation administrator um, nicely does the markup and translator nicely does his or her job. The result is the usable um, 
translated version of the page in multiple languages that can be used by broader community. And this is our goal. And I hope that um, the, the, the sheer understanding of everyone doing their, um, their job, so to say, in a good way uh, makes us a closer community and uh, makes more people engaged in what we do. Thank you for your attention. I hope to make you feel better. So do let me know if and why, in your opinion, I succeeded or not. Um, you can find me anywhere. And do please write on those talk pages like MetaTalk Babylon that I mentioned uh, before if you have um, questions on Translate extension itself. Thank you very much. Uh, this is it for me. And I think we're out of time.